Now I am telling you about Michelangelo Buonarroti. Michelangelo was born on March 6, 1475, in Caprese, Italy, the second of five sons. When Michelangelo was born, his father, Leonardo di Buonarroti Simoni, was briefly serving as a magistrate in the small village of Caprese. The family returned to Florence when Michelangelo was still an infant. His mother, Francesca Neri, was ill. So Michelangelo was placed with a family of stonecutters, where he later jested, with my wet nurse's milk, I sucked in the hammer and chisels I use for my statues. Indeed, Michelangelo was less interested in schooling than watching the painters at nearby churches and drawing what he saw, according to his earliest biographers, Vasari, Condivi and Varchi. It may have been his grammar school friend, Francesco Granici, six years his senior, who introduced Michelangelo to painter Domenico Ghilandaio. Michelangelo's father realized early on that his son had no interest in the family financial business, so he agreed to apprentice him, at the age of 13, to Ghilandaio and the Florentine painter's fashionable workshop. There, Michelangelo was exposed to the technique of fresco. From 1489 to 1492, Michelangelo studied classical sculpture in the palace gardens of Florentine ruler Lorenzo de' Medici of the powerful Medici family. This extraordinary opportunity opened to him after spending only a year at Gerlandio's workshop, at his mentor's recommendation. This was a fertile time for Michelangelo, his years with the family permitted him access to the social elite of Florence, allowing him to study under the respected sculptor Bertoldo di Giovanni and exposing him to prominent poets, scholars and learned humanists. He also obtained special permission from the Catholic Church to study cadavers for insight into anatomy, though exposure to corpses had an adverse effect on his health. These combined influences laid the groundwork for what would become Michelangelo's distinctive style, a muscular precision and reality combined with an almost lyrical beauty. Two relief sculptures that survive, Battle of the Centaurs, and Madonna seated on a step, are testaments to his phenomenal talent at the tender age of 16. Political strife in the aftermath of Lorenzo de Medici's death led Michelangelo to flee to Bologna, where he continued his study. He returned to Florence in 1495 to begin work as a sculptor, modeling his style after masterpieces of classical antiquity. There are several versions of an intriguing story about Michelangelo's famed Cupid sculpture, which was artificially aged to resemble a rare antique. One version claims that Michelangelo aged the statue to achieve a certain patina, and another version claims that his art dealer buried the sculpture an aging method before attempting to pass it off as an antique. Cardinal Riario of San Giorgio bought the Cupid sculpture, believing it as such, and demanded his money back when he discovered he'd been duped. Strangely, in the end, Riario was so impressed with Michelangelo's work that he let the artist keep the money. The cardinal even invited the artist to Rome, where Michelangelo would live and work for the rest of his life. Michelangelo's poetic impulse, which had been expressed in his sculptures, paintings and architecture, began taking literary form in his later years. Although he never married, Michelangelo was devoted to a pious and noble widow named Vittoria Colonna, the subject and recipient of many of his more than 300 poems and sonnets. Their friendship remained a great solace to Michelangelo until Colonna's death in 1547. Soon after Michelangelo's move to Rome in 1498, the Cardinal Jean Bilhas de Lagralas, a representative of the French King Charles VIII to the Pope, commissioned Pieta, a sculpture of Mary holding the dead Jesus across her lap. Michelangelo, who was just 25 years old at the time, finished his work in less than one year, and the statue was erected in the church of the cardinal's tomb. At six feet wide and nearly as tall, the statue has been moved five times since, to its present place of prominence at St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Carved from a single piece of Carrara marble, the fluidity of the fabric positions of the subjects, and movement of the skin of the peat, meaning, pity, or compassion, created awe for its early viewers, as it does even today. It is the only work to bear Michelangelo's name. Legend has it that he overheard pilgrims attribute the work to another sculptor, so he boldly carved his signature in the sash across Mary's chest. Today, 
The Pieta remains a universally revered work. Between 1501 and 1504, Michelangelo took over a commission for a statue of David, which two prior sculptors had previously attempted and abandoned, and turned the 17-foot piece of marble into a dominating figure. The strength of the statue's sinews, vulnerability of its nakedness, humanity of expression and overall courage made that David a highly prized representative of the city of Florence. Originally commissioned for the Cathedral of Florence, the Florentine government instead installed the statue in front of the Palazzo Vecchio. It now lives in Florence's Accademia Gallery. Pope Julius II asked Michelangelo to switch from sculpting to painting to decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, which the artist revealed on October 31, 1512. The project fueled Michelangelo's imagination, and the original plan for Twelve Apostles morphed into more than 300 figures on the ceiling of the sacred space. Michelangelo fired all of his assistants, whom he deemed inept, and completed the 65-foot ceiling alone, spending endless hours on his back and guarding the project jealously until completion. The resulting masterpiece is a transcendent example of high Renaissance art incorporating the symbology, prophecy and humanist principles of Christianity that Michelangelo had absorbed during his youth. The vivid vignettes of Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling produce a kaleidoscope effect, with the most iconic image being the creation of Adam, a famous portrayal of God reaching down to touch the finger of man. Rival Roman painter Raphael evidently altered his style after seeing the work. Michelangelo unveiled the soaring, last judgment, on the far wall of the Sistine Chapel in 1541. There was an immediate outcry that the nude figures were inappropriate for so holy a place, and a letter called for the destruction of the Renaissance's largest fresco. The painter retaliated by inserting into the work new portrayals, his chief critic as a devil and himself as the flayed Saint Bartholomew. Although Michelangelo continued to sculpt and paint throughout his life, Following the physical rigor of painting the Sistine Chapel he turned his focus toward architecture. He continued to work on the tomb of Julius II, which the Pope had interrupted for his Sistine Chapel commission, for the next several decades. Michelangelo also designed the Medici Chapel and the Laurentian Library, located opposite the Basilica San Lorenzo in Florence, to house the Medici book collection. These buildings are considered a turning point in architectural history. But Michelangelo's crowning glory in this field came when he was made chief architect of St. Peter's Basilica in 1546. Michelangelo died on February 18, 1564, just weeks before his 89th birthday, at his home in Massel di Corvi, Rome, following a brief illness. A nephew bore his body back to Florence, where he was revered by the public as the father and master of all the arts. He was laid to rest at the Basilica di Santa Croce, his chosen place of burial. If you like our channel please like comment and share. Thank you.